I want to start us off by introducing Elaine Mejia from Public Works, which is an, organ an organization dedicated to building the public will for the common good. Uh, she's been incredibly helpful for us here in Michigan, helping to develop some strategies and has been really important nationally uh, in a lot of the work that she's going to talk about here. So, you know, please help me in, in, in welcoming Elaine. Thank you, Art, and good morning, everybody. I am very thrilled to be this. This is, I guess, the third time I've been here in the last year, and I've received, a, I've had such a wonderful reception each time, and I've been so energized by learning about the work that, that you all do. And, you know, and in fact, my own uh, energy for the movement needs a, needs a little bit of a fill, my tank, my energy tank needs a little filling up this week, because, in fact, I actually live in North Carolina, which has been a challenging, way, a challenging week for us there, as you can imagine. Probably goes without saying the reason why. But I am really delighted to be here. And the map you have up of Michigan is also really helpful to me on a personal level because my seven-year-old has been bitten by a geography bug lately. And he was asking me recently if the two parts of Michigan actually touch. <laughs> and I'm embarrassed to say, although of course I could find your lovely state on the map, I didn't actually know the answer to that question, but I think I do now. <laughs> Unfortunately, he also wanted me to bring back a bottle of water from the Great Lakes, and I told him I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. <laughs> you know. I suppose if I could do it in three ounces or less and put it back in my, in my bag, my carry-on bag on the plane maybe. But I am really delighted to be here and I've had so much um, fun and have learned so much by working with the, the folks here on this panel and many of others of you in this room over the past year. And as Art said, I am with an organization called Public Works, um, which is dedicated to building support for the common good. Um, and, we, you know, and I, from what we hear from all the organizations we work with, it seems like that is a common thread and a common theme that we just heard. Thinking about all of the things that so many of you just said as you spoke up, and you said, well, uh, what do you love about Michigan? Well, the Great Lakes. Well, right, last time we checked, I don't, most uh, water resources don't protect themselves from pollution. Somebody said, um, somebody said universities. So many of these things that are the building blocks of a great quality of life um, really rely on a f the fundamental role that the public sector needs to play in preserving those things, sustaining them, building them, and, and, and making them last in for future years. And at Public Works, we work with a variety of types of organizations around the country, um, whether it's labor unions, sometimes with elected officials, um, public managers, policy shops and advocates, community organizers, really to reclaim sort of the national story and the story inside communities and inside states and nationally, reclaim the story about what is government, reclaiming it for ourselves as a tool for the common good so that we can make it work for everybody, have the kind of economy that works and provides opportunity for everybody. And we've been really uh, delighted to work with the, the organizations in this room, so many of you over the past year, um, to begin to change this conversation about the essential role of government and the role that it needs to play in Michigan to, to build the best future for everyone here. And as part, obviously, as part of building public will for the common good, that's a lot about influencing sort of the hearts and minds, so to speak, of what Americans really think about, about who they are and what, what, what things are public, what things are private, and re reclaiming the story about government. And so we've worked with an interesting team of researchers over the past several years to really dig in very deep um, beyond just sort of top of mind thinking, but really dig in deep to how do Americans really think about government and the role that it plays and their relationship to it. And then to really, over time, unpack, well, what are the strategies that we need to change that kind of conversation? So I'm going to talk about that for just a few minutes before I then share a few thoughts on why sort of then putting those things into a narrative about your state is so important. So the first thing I want to do is show a, a, a quick video. What it represents is one of the strategies that the research team uh, undertakes when, it goes to, when they go to explore sort of a new topic identifying those immediate hurdles that you face when you want to talk to uh, a broader range of the public, general citizens, about, <clears throat> about a particular topic. And she sort of might, well, one of the things they do is explore. They go into communities, walk around the street, and say, so what do you think of this? And what you're going to see now is a set of video clips where you go up and you say, so what do you think of the government? And these video clips are really meant to sort of represent those key immediate hurdles that we face as we want to, as we begin to try and have a better conversation with our neighbors about the important role of government. So if we could cue up the first video, please, thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
God. Well, I think it's the government. Well, government, they do what they do. See some of your in-laws in that video, perhaps? No. <laughs> perhaps you recognize them even if they weren't themselves directly speaking or videotaped for it. So as you, I mean, as you can hopefully see, and I'm sure this reinforces what you've observed as you've talked to your neighbors and you try to engage people around the issues that you're working on, that there we face some, some very substantial hurdles, and the video is really meant to sort of illustrate what those fundamental hur hurdles are. And, and I should also mention the research team also had several other approaches, sort of finding out what, what are the ma maps in people's minds, what, where, do, where do people go on certain topics. So one-on-one -on -one interviews, focus groups, priming surveys, and other tools that they use to really uncover what are the fundamental challenges that we face as we begin to try and change this conversation. And as you could see from the video clips, your first and foremost, the fundamental challenge is that people think of the work of government as just politics bickering politicians, um, you know, elected officials arguing over this or that, fighting about something that people feel very disconnected from, they don't feel like they have a stake in it, don't feel like it impacts them. So government as, as just politics. The second thing that hopefully can emerge is that people didn't come up in this video with a lot of information, didn't seem to even recognize what government is. Nobody said anything about what's, what what government does, nobody says anything about the schools or public safety. So people think of it as a large bureaucratic institution, obviously, and they also think of it, very, jump very quickly to identifying as very wasteful. So that's the second big challenge. And then third is, is when, when, you, when people talk about their own relationship to government, what they identify with is a, uh, is a consumer relationship, right? I put in an ex a certain amount of money, and what I'm first and foremost focused on is how much am I, partic in particular, getting back in public services for what I put in. So those are sort of the three fundamental challenge that emerge from this set of research. So thinking about what we need to do to change that conversation. It's obviously not going to happen overnight, um, but really the research team focused on real concrete strategies that if we're all using them together and we're an echo chamber for one another in our communities, in our state, in our nation, can really get this conversation turned around. So that's all of the, all of the amazing things that I can, can read about if I walk over to those booths over there, whether it's about water protection or it's about a better uh, jobs plan, can actually get full consideration. Well, first and foremost, and I think this is kind of what connects back to what Art was saying earlier, first and foremost, we have to connect and, and highlight and rebuild uh, in our conversation, into our conversations the fundamental values that people do associate with the, the essential role of government society, values like community well-being. Somebody brought up the example of community earlier when we were talking about what we love about Michigan. Community well-being, quality of life, and the common good, and public purposes. The second thing, and this, um, the second thing is that we've got to make the actual work of government very tangible and real for people again, and get past this notion of the giant bureaucratic wasteful blob. And that is all about giving people concrete examples, visible images, tangible metaphors for the actual work of government on a day-to-day -day basis. And the research team tested lots of ways to do this. Um, one thing that they developed was a new way of talking about government that I'll call, I'll call describing government as public structures. It's a structure, of course, as um, something that um, did not arise overnight. It was built, and it was built by many people, and over time, and it has to be maintained by some active engagement with it. And people are also capable of seeing structures as more than just buildings, but as, as institutions and social support systems. And the third challenge around um, Americans seeing their own role with respect to government just as uh, sort of one as a consumer. 
it won't come as a surprise that what we really need is to reassert the role for, for people to see themselves as sort of citizen managers and reclaim the language of citizenship and build that bit back into all of our communications and, for, and give people a role to play every time we're talking to them about the issues that we're working on. So when I, the other, I want to show another video that helps you see the, the kind of converse, the way the conversation can change um, if you enter it not by uh, sort of stereotypical conversation about government, but you enter it into a way that uses this idea of public structures and asserts the fundamental role that healthy public structures play in communities in a good economy, and you are giving real and vivid examples then. So I'm going to show you a video now of what happens when the research team, also out on the streets and communities, says something rather than what do you think about the government, says something more like this. The main advantages that make America so successful come from the public structures it has created. These public structures include the physical structures, highways, airports, and communication grids, and the organizational structures, the postal system, courts. We need to get things done. And the social support systems that help to ensure health and well-being of our communities. It's our well-functioning and supported public structures that are essential for overall success. So if you start a conversation with those kinds of elements in it, uh, what happens, what kind of conversation then are you capable, are, are capable of having with people about the essential role of government. So that, I would like to show video number two. Government can do things that uh, individuals can't do. You really need the internal structure to make everything work and for people to prosper. I think you need them for a civilization that works. Things that help everyday life keep going. An organized way of getting things done in America. I guess an organized way to connect people so that people can communicate with each other, reach each other physically, and just idealize. Because the things that, that, make, uh, that make our economy work. They support the uh, community. They support, you know, it's for the common good. America, one of the reasons it's able to be functional and successful um, on, on many different levels like it is, is because of public structures. Um, highways and public structures that enable business persons to, you know, factories to deliver uh, goods to merchants, like an institution like the system of law, or uh, the social service system, which enable, which help people to get food, um, help justice to be done, which kind of uh, enables society to flow. So the public structures could be something fiscal or something, you know, institutional. Make it put more money into education. Would that be more government? Yeah, but they put more money into education. I think like that. I think that would be more beneficial. And healthcare. Healthcare. How about the FCC regulations on how cell phones work? You wouldn't be able to have that today. It would be uh -huh. wild. Oh, it sure is. It's part of the organizational structure. The FCC and their rules. That's when they say structures, you mean strictly steel murder buildings? I guess I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, you know, the only the FCC helps you with your cellular phone would be impossible. Uh, and the uh, mm -hmm. posh posh watching my guy right here. It's anyway. No, it's not. It's very organized. <laughs> the structures of our civilization. That's all about our society. Probably, uh, right. It could be like you know, a system, you know, that you have to have a system. You know, without the system, it'll just be like different people doing nothing, you know? That's why it's, um, where people get together and discuss issues that need to be taken care of. Sort of like a, um, uh, town hall type deal. There's certain things government does better than private hands could do. I mean, I, I can't imagine the airline industry if it wasn't like a taboo on fly. If you couldn't be sure. You know, that did all the planes were being kept up properly. Somebody was, was keeping track of that. And I just don't think you can count on the industry. Oh, as that last part cut off a little bit. He said, I don't think you can count on industry to do that. That's what he was going to say. It's different. Quite a different conversation. They're not exactly on board with all, you know, 100 or 200 points of our ambitious uh, policy plan, but you can imagine having a conversation with them about those proposals and the role that those proposals could play in making for a better future for the people of Michigan. 
you can see that people brought their own examples into that conversation. It was obviously you had queued up and you queued into their own knowledge of what, how of the government that is actually around them doing things on a day to day basis. And they were obviously connected to the story. They could see their own um, connection to it in more of a civic minded and less consumerist way. And I, I've covered a lot here, and this is just sort of the highlights of our research. So those fundamental challenges, the hurdles about uh, bickering politicians and government is just politics, giant wasteful bureaucracy, and sort of consumer lens always being applied to government. And sort of then flipping that to thinking about talking about government differently, asserting its fundamental role and connecting that with people's core values that they hold. Making it vivid and real and with examples. And then finally, um, not falling into consumer traps with how we talk about government. Instead, having citizen manager language really embedded into the ways that we communicate and talk about these things. And so I'll shift now to the just for one minute, Art, <laughs> with the work, so the work that we um, have been able to help support here in Michigan, switching over to how do you take some of these basic fundamental languages of reframing the conversation about government in your state, but then do that in a much more powerful way, which is embed it into a story about your state that can resonate very widely uh, and sort of rings true to all of us or all of you here in this room, but that can also really resonate beyond the choir. Uh, and, and be something by which people can judge all the proposals that are out there. And so we really had, we really had a wonderful time working with the folks here, learning about Michigan. And this, this is the part where you all come in, because this, this story about Michigan, while we helped to inform it with some of our research about reframing the conversation about government, was really built by the Michiganders in this room, and I should say that, not so much by me. So what are the fundamental things we know from the body of communications work need to be in a great narrative about a place that can set you up for the best possible conversations about where do we need to go together as Michiganders? Well, it needs to be aspirational and future focused, but it also needs to be grounded in sort of a longer term story that people hold about their state, about their place, about the char their own character, about who they are as a people. It needs to reclaim a sense of common purpose. We're not just all individuals out there doing our own thing and that's not the way to make our state better, but it needs to reclaim a sense of common purpose. It needed to explain, and it finally, it, well, it needed to re explain um, why this vision for Michigan is under threat right now and what's at stake if we don't take action together. And then last, and of course not least, it also needs to imply or begin to build in ideas for specific solutions for where we can head. So those were the common elements uh, that we were looking for in a great state narrative. And with our help on some of the research about how to talk about government and all the wisdom and, and so much of the wisdom in this room about what is the story of Michigan that can uh, resonate widely and is, fits with our values and can help begin to change the conversation about where you need to go as a state. So at that point, I'm definitely going to turn now over to Amanda, who's going to share um, the Michigan narrative, and then we're going to hear great examples about how people have been using it. So I'm d I will be here. I've shared a lot in just a few minutes. I will be here all day if anybody would like to check in or learn more about our organization, what we do, and how we can support you and your work. And so I look forward to that. And I look forward to coming back to your state many times. Thank you.